No, come on. What would that even mean? Maybe if he... No. But what about... That's impossible. But how does he... No! Wait! How? Who? When? It doesn't make any sense! It doesn't make... Whoa! Oh. Hello. I'm Tyler. This is... The Imaginary Axis. And, uh... Have you ever wondered what makes a madman mad? The Joker. The Clown Prince of Crime. The Jester of Genocide. Archenemy of Batman. He's consistently appeared as one of DC's most recognizable supervillains over the years, and no matter who you ask, he's a mentally unstable lunatic. Or is he? I've taken the time to gather nearly every scrap of information available on the Joker, and... it doesn't add up. Something's wrong here, and you don't need to look any further than Arkham Asylum's psychological profiles to know what I mean. Listen to what Dr. Young had to say about the Joker. My most challenging patient at Arkham. The Joker's derangement defies easy classification. His rapidly changing mood swings hint at borderline personality disorder, but he has no trace of associated identity problems. He also displays signs of deep narcissism, but nonetheless he has a well-developed sense of others, as his ability to manipulate everyone from orderlies to doctors in Arkham is extraordinarily well-developed. He also shows all the signs of a highly functioning sufferer of antisocial personality disorder. At times I almost wonder if he's actually insane at all. So what's wrong with the Joker? Well, it's hard to say. Better men than I have tried and failed to give a proper analysis, but one thing's for sure, he's not psychotic. I've looked into it. And yes, interpretations might differ here and there, but at the end of the day, no matter how many people call him psychotic, most versions of the Joker do not suffer from psychosis. A broad term that more or less means you have an impaired relationship with reality. Psychotic people typically experience auditory or visual hallucinations. They can see or hear things that aren't really there, and that drives their chaotic actions. Some constantly deal with ridiculous thoughts that run contrary to overwhelming evidence. Or delusions. Like the idea aliens in deep space are controlling your relatives, or tooth filling is being used by your dentist to track your movements. The Joker doesn't usually display any of these symptoms. And on the rare occasion he does, it's hardly ever sold as an explanation for all his deranged crimes. I'm not saying he isn't crazy, yet, but there's something deeper at work here. And it's not up to me anyway. Insanity is a legal term. It's a defense people can use when charged with criminal activity. Sure, psychologists and psychiatrists are usually consulted, and tests are often provided, but it's ultimately a jury that decides if someone is insane or not. And the Joker has apparently been found insane after every single one of his crimes. Why? I'm not entirely sure. But it's notoriously difficult for the insanity defense to actually work. Less than 1% of all criminal cases even try the insanity plea. And only 20% of that 1% are actually successful. He probably doesn't have a good lawyer, so... How's he doing it? If the Joker is found not guilty by reason of insanity every single time, then his mental illness should be obvious, but I can't find a single illness on record that matches the Joker's symptoms. And to make matters worse, I'm not the first person to realize this. It's actually been pointed out in the comics, too. Take this one time that two Arkham psychologists discovered an old report written by a doctor who seemed to make more headway with the Joker than anyone else. The unnamed physician determined that the Joker's actions seemed irrational, but were actually meticulously researched and brilliantly orchestrated. Not the signs of a madman, but a genius who should be declared sane, sent to prison, and executed. The only problem is, this research was tossed out when they realized it was written by Harley Quinn while she was studying the Joker. Great, so I'm coming to the same conclusions as a serial killer. I I I'm not losing it myself, am I? I mean, Harley isn't the only person to call the Joker out on his sanity. Jason Todd did it once, too. No, 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 no. I, I'm not losing it. I can't be losing it. I'm just having some trouble diagnosing the Joker with anything that would make him insane. Let's start from square one. We know he's definitely a psychopath. 
According to the latest edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM, psychopathy is a personality disorder mainly rooted in a lack of empathy, but including traits like a disregard for social norms, a disregard for the rights of others, the inability to feel remorse or guilt, impulsiveness, and violent behavior. Now, that's not to say there can't be well-adjusted psychopaths who aren't criminals, but those symptoms fit the Joker pretty well. Psychopaths sometimes have tendencies to lie, manipulate, and use or outright harm others without really caring because they don't have any emotional ties to right or wrong. Just for comparison's sake, here's an MRI scan of an average person's brain versus that of a psychopath's. And right off the bat, you probably noticed the significant lack of gray matter volume in the anterior rostral prefrontal cortex and temporal poles. Or parts of the brain responsible for empathy, guilt, and self-consciousness. The Joker doesn't care what people think about him. He doesn't care that what he's doing is wrong, he doesn't think twice about it. He doesn't have any regrets, he just does it. But that doesn't make him crazy. Far from it, actually. Everything I could dig up about legal insanity only reinforced the idea that psychopaths don't qualify. Some documents even went out of their way to mention psychopathy specifically and how it doesn't count as a form of insanity. Psychopaths just aren't crazy. And as a matter of fact, the only things I can attribute to the Joker are all personality disorders that don't make you insane. There's a fine line. When you get to the spirit behind the law, someone who pleads insanity is either saying they didn't have control over their actions, or they didn't know what they were doing was wrong. The Joker doesn't really have either of those problems. In fact, most of his plans are incredibly intricate, well thought out, and aim specifically at sending a message or riling up the good guys. So why does he keep getting admitted to Arkham Asylum? Well, because despite him clearly not being insane, he's also... Clearly insane. I don't really know how else to describe it, but there are several stories out there that just make it obvious the Joker isn't well. Running contrary to everything psychology says. In the story Going Sane, the Joker actually thinks he's finally killed Batman. And this causes him to, well, go sane. He leaves crime behind, packs up all his tricks, and becomes a normal, functioning member of society. Then when it turns out Batman isn't dead, he snaps again. There was also a time when Martian Manhunter managed to temporarily make the Joker sane by telepathically ordering the thoughts in his mind. The Joker expressed sincere regret for all the evil he'd done, and Martian Manhunter described his mind like a raging storm. Clearly not a normal functioning brain. One time the Joker even took a dip in the Lazarus Pit, a chemical pool with regenerative properties that causes temporary insanity to those who use it. It actually made him normal. He was much calmer, more rational, and deadly sorry for all the pain he had caused. So I guess... that's it. There's no real explanation for why the Joker acts the way he does. By all legal and psychological classifications, he shouldn't be crazy, but he obviously is. He must just have something we've never identified before. A completely unique case. Oddly enough, I'm not actually the first person to suggest it. The psychologists at Arkham once developed a collective theory that the Joker is a special case they called Super Sane. Something even saner than us. A modification in human perception that receives more sensory information than anyone else ever has. And the Joker himself has echoed the same thing on occasion, insisting he's not insane, he's just differently sane, ahead of the curve. Something we can't possibly hope to understand because he's saner than anyone he interacts with. Even Batman. As though there's some higher level of reality that only he's really acquainted with. Great Caesar's ghost, that's it! The Joker knows he's a comic book character. It all adds up. He might not do it as much as Deadpool, but the Joker is a master at breaking the fourth wall. 
his occasional wink at the camera, the moments when he grabs his own speech bubbles, when he tells the artist to stop drawing Batman, when he speaks directly to the reader? What if each of these moments isn't a clever metatextual joke, but actually a key factor in the Joker's real personality? He isn't insane, he's saner than anyone in the DC Universe because he realizes that none of it is real. This explains why he turned temporarily sane after being thrown into the Lazarus Pit, a chemical concoction that usually turns people temporarily insane. It did the same thing to him, but he was super sane before being dunked in. It just took him down a level. And when Martian Manhunter ordered the thoughts in his mind and described it like a raging storm, what Jean was really seeing were probably thoughts like, none of this is real, we all live in a comic book, I'm supposed to be the bad guy. Jean decided, that can't be right, this guy's nuts, before pushing them away to make the Joker sane again. And when the Joker turned normal after watching Batman supposedly die, it was because Batman's death made the Joker reconsider the idea that he's a fictional supervillain. Because a comic book would never actually kill off its title character, there can't be a Joker without a Batman. He convinced himself he was crazy all those years and tried to go back to a normal life until he realized Batman was still alive. It was a fake out, and the Joker was right all along. Every inconsistency in his backstory, the dramatic changes in his character, his obsession with being Batman's opposite, it all makes perfect sense if the Joker knows he's fictional. And he definitely knows, my friends. He's turned the page in his own comic before. There was even one time in a Marvel DC crossover when he recognized Spider-Man from a previous crossover they had that wasn't even canon. Spider-Man didn't recognize the Joker because he's normal, but the Joker is super sane and sees past things like canon and the fourth wall. All these years, the Joker's been laughing and trying to tell everyone about life's biggest joke. But what is the joke? Nothing matters. Nothing's real. What if the joke is how much people seem to care for the nameless background characters the Joker murders? The fact that everyone thinks he's an evil, deadly psychopath, even though after all these years, he still isn't technically responsible for a single real death. And all the heroes try to stop him like he's a lunatic, but the truth is, a lot of people wouldn't even buy comics if he wasn't there to oppose the Batman. <laughs> it's... kinda funny. Day 14. The isolation tank was like solitary confinement, only wetter. I drew some jokes to pass the time. You heard the one about the guy from Nantucket? <laughs> Who were you talking to in there? I was entertaining my fans. In the isolation tank? Some people have imaginary friends. <laughs> I have imaginary fans. Fans of what exactly? Hello, clown here. I make people laugh. Not everyone's here to see the Batman, you know. Guys as dull as the day is long. But you're not a clown. You're a mass murderer. It's a fine lie. It just so happens that I've got a very demanding public. I'm constantly striving to exceed their expectations. Do you have any idea how much pressure I'm under? Do you? Has it ever occurred to you that these imaginary fans of yours are really just figments of your imagination? <laughs> Has it ever occurred to you, Doc, that we're really just figments of theirs? Told you I was crazy! See? Ow! Hey! Not in the face! Not crazy? <laughs> like hell I'm not crazy. I mean, if I'm not crazy, what am I doing in the loony bin? All alone, in solitary confinement, talking to my imaginary... Uh, you are. Imaginary, right? Right? Hey everybody, it's Tyler again. And if you've made it this far, thanks for watching my video on the Joker. And a special thank you to my fellow YouTuber, Akeem Lewanson, who provided the voice for the Joker at the end of this video. His YouTube channel should be on the screen right now, so you guys should go and check him out if you get a chance. He does great voices. 
But that's not to say I don't like hearing your voice, so feel free to tell me what you thought of this video in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share with your friends, and tell everybody about how I can construct a video about the psychology of the Joker, but not make a good segue to asking you to subscribe. I'm just messing around, but seriously, if you enjoyed this one, check out some of these videos, you might like them too. I'm supposed to be tackling the multiverse next, so you could say I've been a little busy. If you want to keep track of things, be sure to visit my Facebook and Twitter page, where I promise to post updates more frequently. Aside from that, thanks for the view, links are in the description, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't go crazy now. <laughs>